the very very first patient that uh, we saw in our emergency department po came in with symptoms of flu. He's in his mid 60s, but we always see that all the time in our ER. At that time, we don't wear any PPEs. At first, we're still like, ah, maybe this is just like 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 flu, and because the symptoms is almost similar. And then. Uh, few days later, a couple of our staff start, started showing symptoms. So there's about 15 people who get in contact with that patient. Those 15 uh, my co-workers of mine po got tested. Two of them came back as positive. And that's when it hit us like, oh, okay, this is a, a serious thing. And then after that, the number of people that we see increased by the day. Po. Last time I, um, I worked, po, there's confirmed 48 positive for COVID in the whole hospital. And I, I have four of my co-workers who tested positive for COVID-19. So we're on our way now to go do some weekly shopping. So we've got gloves and of course we need our mask as well. This one is a three-ply mask, so I'm just going to use two instead. Yeah. As you can see, this area for the lockdown, this area is really busy. So a lot of people uh, go to the train station right there. There's no one in the train station apart from us. No. Drastically, lifestyle in uh, London has really changed. I am a diabetes nurse. I am the one who is assigned as well to check on um, the orders for the PPEs or the personal protective equipment. We ordered quite a lot because we wouldn't know when is this going to end. I'm also an expecting mother. I am on my 32nd week as of the moment, four to six weeks away from giving birth. And I would be hopefully having a normal delivery in a hospital. But since this COVID-19 happened, there are a lot of changes and a lot of uncertainties as of the moment. I'm not even sure if my husband is gonna be allowed to be with me when I give birth because as of the moment, I am going to my hospital appointments by myself. He's not allowed to come with me because it's in the hospital and the risk of um, contracting the virus in the hospital is really high. I'm pretty sure people are really worried about what's happening now. I remember one of my colleagues spoke to me. She was quite worried because she was a mother of three as well. Um, she works as a frontliner. She said that until where are we gonna help out as healthcare professional without risking our own families and even risking our own lives as well. So people are really worried. People are having anxieties right now uh, I am still working as a nurse in a nursing home given that it's a nursing home the susceptible uh, patients are the elderly people which I am currently taking care of in my current workplace it's really uh, strict they didn't allow any anyone to enter even their immediate families relative and friends a lot of my co-workers are already 55 years old and above, which is very high risk of getting the virus. They are really um, scared about it. And whenever they work, I can see that they are really protective of themselves. They wanted this virus to stop already because it's causing so much anxiety. Our first ever uh, case here in our county was in Roseville. She was actually the first death that occurred in this in uh, California. Uh, two weeks ago, I had three uh, di three positive patients, COVID patients, um, and unfortunately, none of them made it. Uh, I've seen 
this disease not only physically damages but also emotionally how it affects not only the patient but also their families and overall the atmosphere in the hospital um, uh, everybody's weary everybody's anxious nowadays po, with what's going on it's very easy to lose hope the only thing po, that I hang on to is the promise that God promised us that he will never forsake us and um, always help us in everything that we do and that's what gives me the courage and the hope po, is being a member of the Church of Christ until the end po. that's what I've been hanging on to tayo ng mga iglesia ni Kristo. Tayo na merong pagkahirang mula sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Hindi dapat tayong padaig. Hindi tayo dapat mapagtagumpayan ng pag-aalinlangan sa ating puso. Kahit na ang sitwasyon ay wala ng pag-asa, ang tigna natin hindi yung ating magagawa, kundi yung magagawa ng Diyos. Yung pangako niya sa atin na kanyang gagawin bilang kanyang mga hinirang. Pagkaganyan, tayo ay matutulad kay Abraham na nanindigan sa pananampalataya na kanyang tinanggap mula sa ating Panginoong Diyos. So the things that are going through my mind when government uh, imposed quarantine were done was how are we going to worship? Of course, because that's one of the... One, one of the most important things in our lives, uh, worshiping and, and continue our, our duties uh, in the church. But the church administration has been catering to um, our souls still, even in these times, to make sure that we still receive the words of God, that we still are able to worship Him. So right now, uh, because of the strict policies uh, to mitigate the disease and uh, try to help flatten the curve, we have been doing home worship services. We have a designated place in our house. We still worship with you know, proper worship service clothes. We still give a lot of high regards to the worship services even if they are being done in this manner and we've been doing this for at least two to three weeks now and it has been uh, really a blessing that we are still able to to worship um, even during these times kaya ang isang iglesia ni Cristo dapat matatag matibay sa kanyang pananampalataya Kaya nakita ninyo ang isang kampanya natin sa iglesia noon. Ano yun? Palaguin natin ang ating pananampalataya. Kailangan kasi yun. Bali ba? Di ba? Alam ba nating mangyayari na ito ngayon? Itong nangyayari sa kasalukuyan? Hindi po. Pero inihanda na tayo ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Kinakailangan lumalago ang ating pananampalataya ang ating pag-ibig, ang ating pag-asa. Kinakailangan ng hahawak tayo sa magagawa ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Sapagkat pagka dumating ang mga bagay na hindi natin kaya, malalampasan natin yon. Kailan? Kung tayo ay sumasampalataya sa mga pangako ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Ang sabi ng Biblia, Ang ating Panginoong Diyos Anya hindi magsasabi ng isang bagay na hindi Totoo. Lahat ng kanyang sasabihin sa atin, totoo. Pagka mayroon siyang ipinangako, gagawin niya yun. Tingnan ninyong ginawa ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa Iglesia. Tinupad niya ang lahat ng kanyang pangako. Hindi lang sa panahon ng sugo. 
hindi lang sa panahon ng kapatid na Iranyo Manalo, hanggang sa ating panahon, tinutupad ng ating Panginoong Diyos yung kanyang mga pangako. Kaya ang kinakailangan ngayon sa isang tunay na Iglesia ni Kristo, umasya sa doon sa pangako ng Diyos. Para nang sa ganun, yung kanyang pananampalataya tumatag, tumibay, at maitaguyod niya ang kanyang sagutin sa Diyos anuman ang kanyang nasa sagupa. Uh, since it's very difficult to distinguish if the the resident or the elderly people are already infected with the virus because a uh, majority of them already have cough and colds before the virus arrive. That's why we treat everyone as if they already have the virus. But uh, with this disease, you also worry about uh, your family. Am I going to give it to my family? Actually, that has been the, my biggest worry about it. It's not about myself. It's making sure that I don't give it to my my loved ones. My parents live with me. They are at the high risk population. Um, I have young kids as well. Before, uh, when you go home, you can relax and you can actually um, take your mind off of work. But this time around, you can't. I don't hug my kids uh, uh, as much. Um, I I stay away from my parents as much as possible, just in case. My wife is uh, immunocompromised. Immunocompromised meaning her immune system po is not the strongest, so she can get easily sick. And me uh, being exposed at work, especially with the COVID-19, coming home and the fear of passing it on to my kids and my wife, which is very scary po. Before I go to work, I think that's when my anxiety level is at the highest. But, and I pray to God, that's a, a way for me to actually let go of my fear and just uh, let let God do uh, whatever He wants to do in my life. Even when I'm already at work, before I co- go inside a patient's room, I say a short prayer. Uh, God help me to take care of this patient or if it's a COVID-19 patient, please you know, protect me. And that always gives me the courage. That, that always gives me the, the drive to, to just do what I can do and God will do the rest. Hindi tayo pababayaan ng Diyos, mga kapatid. Mga lingkod niya tayo eh. Maaaring tayo ay dumaan sa mga pagsubok hindi tayo makaiiwas dyan sapagkat narito pa tayo sa mundo, wala pa tayo doon sa bayang banal. Pero pagka anya tayo umasa, nagtiwala, nanalig at magsandig sa ating Panginoong Diyos, tutulungan tayo ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Kaya dapat sa isang iglesia ni Kristo, pinatutunayan niya yung kanyang pag-asa sa Diyos. Kaya kinakailangan masuno rin tayo para patunayan natin sa Diyos yung ating pag-asa sa Kanya. Kaya kinakailangan natutupad din natin yung pagbabagong buhay na isasakatupar natin ang lahat ng kalooban ng ating Panginoong Diyos para nang sa ganun makaasa tayo, makapagtiwala tayo at manalit tayo sa Kanya para anuman ang ating nasasagupa ay maranasan natin ang pagtulong ng ating Panginoong Diyos. The way I approach a bad situation in my life changed when I became a member of the Church of Christ. For example, this pandemic. If I don't know how to um, cope with the things around me, I have a lot of suicidal attempts before. But when I became a member of the Church of Christ, I just prayed. I prayed a lot to take away the sadness that I am feeling to make me happy again, to remove all the worries that I feel right now. That's why I am really thankful that I was called inside the Church of Christ because whenever I attend the worship services after that, I feel energized again because I was reminded of God's teachings and I feel like 
God is beside me, watching me, whatever, whatever I do, especially at work. That's what I'm um, clinging to. That's what's make me wake up every day and continue with with my job. That's what's inspiring me to continue uh, taking care of patients, uh, despite the fact that uh, I'm endangering my life. That's what's driving me to continue to fulfill my duty as the head of the household, strengthening my family, making sure that they're okay during these times of the pandemic, not only physically, but emotionally, and also most especially spiritually. I was um, a bit worried of when my child's gonna come out, it might not be, it might not be that beautiful, the world that she would see, and it would be a cruel world. But then to me, it really, the worship services really helped me to realize that there's nothing I should worry about because what I really just need to do is to put my complete trust to God and He will be looking after me and my family. Magtiwala kay sa Kanya, manalik kay sa Kanya, umasa kay sa Kanya. Huwag magkaroon ng kahit katitik na pag-aalinlangan. Huwag tayong pumayag na badaig tayo ng pag-aalinlangan sapagat ang ating Panginoong Diyos nakahandang tumulong sa mga lingkod niya na matibay ang kanilang pananalig at pananampalatay sa Kanya, hindi niya tayo pababayaan.